Welcome to the Utah Street Banter Podcast. Welcome to another episode here on the Utah Street Banter Podcast. I'm Cody. With me, like always, is Elijah. How you doing, buddy? Uh, I was doing good before I had to come here and talk about this. <laughs> you know, um, the, like I was thinking about it, and uh, we were at the game Tuesday, and it did not go the way we wanted it to. Very quiet car ride. Uh, and then Wednesday, I watched the game, and I've tried my best not to think about it since then. I, I will say that I know uh, for the past couple of episodes, I've not been uh, wearing my Orioles gear. But most of the people on my on my campus, they actually don't recognize me that much without a hat on, because um, I'm always wearing hats. That's something me, Cody, my dad, we all we always wear hats. Well, it's been tough because about 95% of my hats are Orioles hats, and I have refused to put a piece of ear- Orioles gear on since Wednesday. <laughs> I've not. I've been rocking my Cowboys hat ever since. Yeah, uh, hey, which I, big I, big win on Monday morning football. Yeah, 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 but, yeah. You're right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, it's been it's been real sad. It's been really yes. sad. Yeah, I've been watching some of the other playoff games, and it doesn't feel like baseball because, like, they actually hit the ball. It's weird. You, you know what it feels like? You know, uh, like the day after Christmas. Like, yes. you, you, nobody wears a Christmas shirt the day after no. Christmas, and you don't. You you're, you know you can't watch Santa Claus or Elf. You can't watch Elf the day after Christmas. You know, it's yeah. it's over. You know, that's kind of how how it, this feels right now. But yeah, just. Uh, I, in case you were living under a, a brick, uh, we we lost the, the the first two games of the series. Mm. Um, I mean, the game we were at, um, you know, it's funny because uh, normally I have a whole sheet of the box scores and stuff, and I didn't even bring it up. It's not even in my on yeah, my computer uh, right yeah, now. I can sum it up for us. It, uh, they <laughs> scored, and we didn't. We didn't. Corbin Burns did amazing. Uh, yeah, no, because. So this is actually conversations that happened between me and Cody. Uh, I basically the only conversation were like before the seventh inning because those of you that don't know Cody, once um once it starts getting rough, he kind of doesn't talk that much. So basically after that, there was no talking going on from him. Um, but it was at the beginning of the game, Corbin was doing great. I was like, well, just give him a blank, just give him a blank contract, whatever he wants. Give him the blank check, the checkbook, throw it all at him. Give him all, give him the whole. He will, he can have the warehouse. Give it all to him. Yeah, and then by about the ninth, the eighth, ninth inning, I was like, "Well, if I had to guess, this solidifies Corbin Burns will not be an Oriole next year." So I mean, he did a, he did amazing for us though. I and between the two games, uh, you know, it was one of those things where you know, obviously, pitching wasn't really much of an issue for us. Um, no, and I like your um, this week in baseball. We have a segment, uh, and uh, it's called this week in baseball, where we go over what happened. Uh, that's not Orioles related, and uh, pretty much right now, that's everything baseball related. Yeah. Um, but I, I like that you put. Uh, we should all become Royals fans. Uh, for only a first series. series, only first series. series. Yeah. Yeah. No, like uh, earlier today when I was at dinner, I was in the dining hall, and I walked by someone I know, and uh, so I am. I have. I'm a part of a spike ball club here on my school, and he comes. I was asking if he was coming. And he said no. I was like, oh, why? And that's why he's a Yankees fan. So he said that he was actually having a watch party for the game. And I, I'm sure he felt sorry for me because I just got so sad after he said that. I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, there's that's still happening. I was like, well, I, I'm sorry to hope you know that I am rooting against you. He's <laughs> like, I, I, I figured, understood that. <laughs> and then he's like, I, I'm really sorry, though. I was like, yeah. It's, uh, it's just I don't even know what to do. I hate the Royals with every bone in my body at this point. Um. More than I already do. They ruined my childhood in 2014, and then here they are. <laughs> and you know what? If they could do what they did in 2014 and make it to the World Series, though, I'd be okay with that. Yeah. I'd be perfectly fine I, with that. I mean, you know, I hate to say it, but there's a lot of people on that team I like. You know, I'm a, yeah, I, I, I Bobby love Bobby Witt. Witt. Like, what's I mean, there not to like? The, the, Salvador Because they're, they're similar to us in a way. Uh, they, they're a lot of young guys. A lot of guys yeah. that have kind of just fought yeah. and stuff. And that's it's awesome to see. There's some guys on there, obviously, that you know. And then mm-hmm. you have even like the Kyle Isbells. Who, no yeah. one knows that Michael Massey. Some young right. guys that are making making a name for themselves, and it's great. You know, yeah, that's it, what the Orioles should be doing right now. Right. You know, it's funny because we were at the game, and like there was only really two people, three people in that lineup that I was like, "Oh, that guy can do something." You yeah. know, and that to me that was Bobby Witt, Salvador Perez, and, and um, Vinny Pasquantino. And Vinny Pasquantino. Yeah. yeah. So those were the like, three, and I was like, "Well, you know what? If we get, if you know, don't let them guys beat you, we're fine." 
And you know the Royals knew that too because you yeah. saw what what did they do when they scored their one run? They got they Corbin Burns walked someone and he stole on him. Yep. Took advantage. They moved him over and then Bobby Witt did. You the one thing that we said is you can't let Bobby Witt Jr. beat you. And I don't know if one RBI single, well, it, two RBI singles between the two games is him beating you, but that yeah. that's all it took to beat us. Yeah, true. But true. also when you don't hit, you don't hit. Yep. True. So uh, uh, let, let's get to our. Uh, oh, have, you got, you, my got trivia a, first. You, you got a trivia. Let's go. Yeah. So I, I have my trivia first. So on October sixth, who, who had had more RBIs and more home runs than the Baltimore Orioles? <laughs> on October sixth. Yeah. So that was yeah. That was um, Sunday. Uh, uh, Mark Vientos versus the Phillies had two home runs and four RBIs. That's really? more. That, that, he had more home runs than the <laughs> Orioles scored runs. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I just thought that's yeah he, that's <laughs> crazy that's crazy yeah I just thought that was interesting he kind of beat up the Phillies obviously that was I watched the Phillies Mets game the other day that was that was a great game uh, yeah what else can you that's what postseason baseball should be back and forth and stuff love the emotion um I I'm close to a lot of Phillies fans here so I I kind of hear their misery and their loss and stuff like that but I I root for the people I root for my friends as fans but also I root against the city of Philadelphia I really like this Mets team. Yeah, you me know, too. Jose Iglesias is a former Oriole. I, yeah. I'll always root for him. But this is just me for right now in the National League. I'm just rooting for good baseball. In the American yeah. League, I'm rooting for the Yankees to lose. That's that's yeah. all I've got left to win. That's that's all they're left for me to yeah. do. Yeah, I mean, I, to be honest, if the Yankees lose, I really don't care who wins the World Series on the American side. I I fully on the I American like the Guardians. League side, I want the. T- I, I like the Guardians. And I like I'm a, uh, the Royals beat us, but other than that, I'm fine with them. I really like this Tigers team. I yeah. don't know why. There's just something about them. They're good. Yeah. Um. Getting to our takeaways from the postseason. Um. I'll do one, and if you want to do one, uh, oh, so we forth. got three okay. of them. Yep. So, uh, the first one I got is are uh that young talent doesn't um that young talent that's good during the regular season doesn't always translate to the playoffs. Yeah. So that's sort of what it seemed to be, right? Um, so it seemed like, you know, uh, the same swagger yeah. that um, some of our young guys had during the regular season, especially in spurts, uh, didn't translate. But also I said that because um, I think we're good in a, like, a, I think we're a good team in a seven game series right now, but a must win, um, you know, series, like a three gamer, uh, you know, it just, I don't know. It just doesn't seem like we had much of a chance. Like we were at the game and I we were down by one run and it felt like we were down by ten. You yeah. know, it just seemed like uh, each uh, each player was playing, uh, each Oriole was playing individual baseball, not team yeah. baseball. And no, you definitely. could see that because we kept hitting pop flies because everybody was trying to hit a room run, um, because they were all trying to be that guy, right? But uh, just couldn't do it. But that's kind of how I feel right now. Um, just a little. You know, a little bummed by that. That doesn't mean it's not going to happen in the future, but that's definitely saying where I think maybe some of us, including myself, jumped the gun on thinking that we were going to be extremely yeah. uh, talented in the playoffs uh, immediately. I think you know, uh, next year, year after year after, I think we'll get better and better and better. Yeah. You know, uh, I think uh, I'm trying to come like be okay with this that. Uh, if we have these guys for seven years and we win, win one World Series, that that was a win for us, you yeah. know. So, um, so maybe year five in Gunner's contract, we win a World Series, and we'll totally forget about this show that we're doing right now. Yeah, because I think uh, just going off of what you like, the most recent thing about the winning World Series and say year five, I I don't even think the biggest thing for us, me as an Orioles fan, and probably all of us, is that we don't even need to see a World Series right now. <laughs> A, a win, like yeah. an individual game win, is more than what we've gotten. Yeah, yeah. I don't but, care if it's uh, even if we lose a series. If I'd love for us to score more than one run in a series. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, the thing that got me was like I know when I was watching Game Two. Excuse me, I was watching Game Two on TV. Uh, they were like, you know, talking about how you know powerful the Orioles have been and. You know, uh, Adley comes up and the man, he could really, you know, do something. He takes a strike right down the middle. Yeah. And uh, they were like so surprised we weren't hitting. And I'm sitting here going, ah, except for Ben McDonald. Yeah, because he's o- been there to see it. I was like, you other two haven't watched the Orioles. Yeah. Like you're looking at the averages and the averages look great. 
I was like, but that was pre All Star break. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like they 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 were world beaters before the All Star break, which really what happened since then is the numbers have just been falling. Yeah, you know, because you I look mean, at it as a whole, it's not a terrible number. No, but if mm-hmm. you really look closely, yeah, if you look at Adley's seven oh nine OPS, you say, well, that's not good to start. Well, if you look at it, that he's had three home run, three or four home runs, or whatever it was in the whole second half. Yeah, that's why it's just it's been really really bad, and yeah. that's why kind of going on to my first takeaway is that something needs to happen with our coaching staff. Yeah, just something needs to change. We know Brandon Hyde's going to be back next year, and I don't think necessarily he's the blame. I don't. Who who knows who to blame here? Is there an individual person you could blame? Uh, is it a philosophy? Because I know this year we're much more home run heavy. Mm-hmm. Kind of, it, this year's offense at the beginning of the year reminded me much more of a Buck Showalter type offense right right you're relying more on a home run more driving the ball and i think when you have a team with a chris davis and a nelson cruz and a mark trumbo that works this team we have a gunner henderson and an anthony santon there that can hit a lot of home runs but we are such an athletic team we should be playing we should be stealing bases jordan westberg should have more than five or six stolen bases on the year whatever he has He is an athletic guy we should be having these singles turned into doubles advancing runners over just putting the, the the ball in play. It's that simple. We sat there. How many times did the Orioles pop out to the second base in the game that we were at? It was at least like four or five times. Yeah, it's crazy. It, it's insane. I don't understand why you don't just, just put the ball in play and see what happens. I, I don't get it. I don't know if it's – I mean, we have Mac Borschalti and Ryan Fuller are co-heading coaches. Is it is it them? Is somewhere in there the problem is? I don't yeah. know. Is it – is it Cody Ashy? He's on offensive strategy coach. I don't know really what that even means. But is it is it something with him? Uh, just something has to change. Yeah. And yeah. I don't think you can uh, pitch. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt no, you. But fine. like our pitching yeah. wise, like Drew French, I think you can't blame him for any of our pitching. Every, all of our pitching problems this year was purely injury based. Yeah. And that's uh, he, the, he's our MVP of our coaching staff. A hundred percent because. What are you supposed to do with what you have? And the only, I think the only pitching problems, the only arguments you can have about our pitching staff and the way it was handled is maybe our bullpen usage and how guys were pulled into certain times. But that's also, that's just every once in a while. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's, it purely comes down to our offensive strategy and how the second half of the year we fell apart. Yeah. I think the biggest thing I, I saw um, coaching wise is just the, pro- the approach on the yeah. offensive side. Like, I think that was the annoying part that, you know, I think that's where I think, oh, you're seeing a lot of people get on Hyde, but I don't think Hyde's the guy you're getting mad at. I think no. Hyde, I think the way this team is and the, this new style, there's so many other coaches that are, you know, in the yeah. you know, inside mechanics, inside the players' heads, and Hyde's more of the mentor, the the lineup build. Uh, I don't. I think when you're looking at approach and stuff like that, that's Hyde has. Then that's not yeah. what he's doing, and I mean, that's if that's you, front office build yeah, though. Exactly, and that's that's all the way up top with Michael Elias, Sigma yeah, Dell, right, uh, right. Eve Rosebaum. That's and that's when you get up there. Obviously, I'm not saying to get rid of Michael Elias. Um, I know, I I've had plenty of conversations with different people that throughout the year have gone completely differently. Whether it's I love Michael Elias. I hate Michael Elias. I yeah. know all this podcast I said with Michael Elias, like in Michael Elias, we trust. Yeah. But there becomes a certain point that whether him or the people that he has hired, something's not working and something has to change. And I don't know where that even has to start. I just, yeah. I, I don't, I, I'm, I feel like I'm smarter than the average person baseball wise, but this isn't something that I'm. I don't know what the answer is for this, and I don't think a lot of people know what the answer is. I think this is something Michael Elias may have an idea and something. You, I would hope to see a change in the coaching staff before next year, and I'd hope to see a big difference in approach by next year. Absolutely, yeah. So we'll see. We'll see. I mean, the, the one my second takeaway is that our pitching surprised me in the playoffs. Yeah. And one big one that like we all expected Burns to do great, but guys, I'm excited for Zach Eflin in 2025. Yeah, we have him absolutely. for a whole another season. Uh, that what a trade! That's probably the best trade probably in all of baseball. Um, yeah. You know, during the trade deadline, so it was one of those things where he comes out and he pitched just like Burns. I mean, yeah, they dominated, did great uh, through strikes. You know, so 
that's that was one of the biggest things I thought. I thought if we lost, that's how we were going to lose. We were going to lose because of our pitching. No, uh, our, our bullpen, perfect. Uh, well, yeah, good. You know what well, I mean? I uh, mean, yet again, we gave up two runs in the yeah. second game. Yeah, I uh, mean, what are you going to do? Two runs. That's yeah. the major league average for a game. I think is four or five. That's yeah. nothing. Yeah. So that was the biggest thing. I, I mean, if there's anything to take away on the positive side, well, there's a couple, but yeah. the pitching was just immaculate. You know, so really happy. No, and like you said, I'm ex- super excited for Eflin. I mean, he'll. If I had to guess, he's opening day starter next year. Unless we re-sign Burns or sign some other pitcher, which I just highly doubt. Yeah. Because I know we'll look forward in the future probably of our projected roster and stuff like that closer to the beginning of spring training, which is way looking forward in the future. But I don't foresee us having probably a better pitcher than Eflin. Because uh, Kyle Bradish, who I would put above Eflin, isn't going to be healthy by opening day. No, no. So it's just... It's going to be interesting to see uh, what he looks like. I'm really excited. Like you said, definitely be- best Orioles trade by far and probably it, best pitching trade of the uh, deadline. 100%. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and then my next one also kind of regarding next year is what does Santander's future hold? Because it's... he did not come through at all in many, many big moments. And I think throughout the all season, Orioles fans are going to think of uh, game two. You had uh, Cedric had the home run. Yeah. Right. And we, we're feeling good and we have bases loaded, no outs. He swings at three straight balls and pops out. Yep. Uh, yep. It's just that's not what you've seen from him at all this season. Right. And I think that's him trying to do too much. And that also that might that might be approach yet again. That might be coming from the coaching staff. Who knows? Just that's. We should not have had bases loaded, no outs with Anthony Santon there up. And if he didn't strike out, there should have been a run produced. Right. Yeah, I agree. I think Anthony Santander was our team captain this year. Yeah. Uh, and I think it would be great to keep him. Here's my only issue is the last time that we paid somebody after they had the best season of their career, we are still paying him. His name is Chris Davis. I also will... Listen to your argument. Don't turn off our podcast. I'm not saying he's Chris Davis. That's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is you're paying for the next year. You will be paying for 2024's version of Anthony Santander. And he deserves every bit of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you'll never get it again. He, okay. I could be wrong. Like, and I would love to be wrong. Right. But. I think this year was an epic year for him. He helped us by he put our team on his back the whole entire second half. Yeah. We rode his back. He did amazing. I love him. I mean, I went from like thinking he was part of like the the group that we need to get rid of as we get these young core uh a couple years ago. I'm glad I was wrong because he was great. But I think if you I don't think this is gonna happen. Okay, but I think if we were to pay him uh, 120 for five years, I think it would be a mistake. I I think the only way Anthony Santander signs back with us is if he really wants to be an Oriole. Yeah. I think that's only because I don't foresee him. I think, like you said, a five for 120, I, I think he gets a deal five five years. Yeah, that's probably the max that he'd get because – I, I think Anthony Santander could be – he could be a guy that plays for another 10 years possibly at, as a DH only for a while and just kind of kind of a bat. That's all he is. And that's that's getting to be what more and more he is now, but obviously he's still a really, really good bat. Um, I just think – I don't I don't think the Orioles would offer him more than three years. I really don't yeah. because it would be too risky on their side. And, and maybe they, they throw in more – more of an, uh, a higher AAV, which is annual value on the contract. Um, maybe he gets a higher AAV uh, if, than he would for three years normally. But maybe yeah. he gets maybe he gets 20, 20, 25 a year, maybe 25, 30 a year, something like that. Yeah. Uh, and say so say he gets 80 for three, maybe. That's more than what he's probably worth, but that's the Orioles trying to help him out a little bit. That's depending how much they want to spend. Yeah. I just – uh, Yeah, I, I, I feel you. If I don't you're know. Doing- as you do me a favor, yeah. uh, when I hit my third point here, can you look up how much we've paid him at, throughout his contract? Well, I'm just I, I'm just curious. Do you I, have it? I can. I have. Uh, I think I might. 
Yes. Uh, so yeah. his career earnings is twenty five point nine million dollars. He's made eleven point seven this year. Yeah, I mean, I, so like, my, here's my thing: is if he comes back and plays against the Orioles, everybody deserves to give him a standing ovation because it's one of those things where at some point you have to provide like for your family and your fu- your the future of your family. Yeah. So. Uh, I, I, you know, I, as much as I'd love to see him on the Orioles, and I would, you know what I mean. I also will not be, I will not have any hate towards him if he tries to get paid for the first time no, in his career. Absolutely not. You know what um, I mean? Like this is his time. This is it. So for as him, long as it's not the Yankees, yeah, as no, long as it's not the Yankees, I, I think, I think you're looking at like a Giants. I think uh, yeah. put him in. Yeah. You know, no. But, but you know, so like you know, I, I think he, he's going to be. If, if I was oh, him, I, I, I'd be, you know, well, go ahead and take care of yourself, buddy. No. Yeah, yeah, he he's gonna be the ones that we look back on. We think of fondly. You have memories of him playing back in 2019, 2020, 2021 with the uh-huh. really bad Orioles, and he was kind of the yeah. light through the darkness. And he, he's carried us out. And yeah. I would I would love for him to be on the Orioles next year. I just feel like I feel like if the Orioles if if what we've been told up to this point and what it looks like we're going to spend more money, I think Elias is going to be very smart with how he spends his money. And he might feel that what uh, what Santander deserves and what he should get isn't going to be what the Orioles are able to come up with. Yeah, and also I will say this is it, I, I'm going to try to equate it to like what people you know, are the average fan uh, can you know, yeah kind of understand. So basically, it's sort of like if I have a fantasy football team and I didn't make the playoffs or I didn't do good in the playoffs, I'm not going to draft the same exact fantasy football team next year expecting a different result. Yeah. So this is the one guy where, you know, he's the guy, you know, a replaceable piece, not replaceable because he's bad, but you have the chance of you don't have to release a big name. Yeah. You can just try to bring in a fresh face, a fresh, you know, person. Uh, that's the only reason I think that this would happen. I hope not. Hopefully he's an Oriole. Like, I, I, don't get me wrong. Uh, talking about uh, another Oriole that I hope stays uh, is did Cedric Mullins do enough in the playoffs to stay an Oriole throughout the 2025 season and the 2024, 2025 off season. This is a guy well, that he's I, not a free agent. No, no, I know. Yeah. I, I think we trade him. I, I, uh, okay. uh, so no, so, so basically I, I completely agree with you. So I think he would be a, a great trade piece. Uh, I don't know if I want it though. You know, like yeah. I, it's just cause my man's the only person that did anything on our playoff roster. Yeah. Um, you know, it was like one of those things where uh, he had a decent year. He's a great center fielder, above average center fielder oh, yeah. uh, uh, on the, in the field. It, at the plate, you know, give or take. But, uh, I mean, say, well, guy, what? Uh, he had one of the better second, second halves of the Orioles. He yes. had a great offensive second half. And I think I don't. I know at the very, for those of you who listen way back when, which I know there's not many of you that listened before this season started, but uh, I, I did think he'd be traded before. Yeah. Like I, I, He was one of my early trade candidates because I just knew there was teams that wanted him and we needed pitching. Like I yeah. remember one of my very, very old mock-up trades was like a Jesus Lazardo cedric Mullins swap. Yeah. Um, and obviously, Jesus Lazardo has fallen off. But Mullins, I think he's a guy that's going to be cool to keep around um, just because you look at Colton Cowser's season, he had a really good season. You expect him to get better, and he's a really good defender. But yeah. if we get rid of Anthony Sanson there, okay, that leaves two starting outfielders, and then you say, well, now you have Heston Kerstad. Say he steps up. Do you really want an outfield of Heston Kerstad in left or right field, and then you have Cowser in center, and who else do you have? Yeah, Austin Slater. Let's be honest; he's probably not going to be here next year, uh, unless you expect Jorge Mateo to be back and ready and put him in the outfield. Um, do you try to expect Kobe Mayo to be a corner outfielder? I know you have Judd Fabian and all these other prospects that are coming up, but I just think it wouldn't be worth it to not keep him. No, I understand. I understand. It's just that's that's one of the ones where I'm looking at. I mean, hey, here's something crazy. Uh, Cedric Mullins uh, had nine home runs uh, after the All Star break. Uh, somebody else only had nine home runs after All Star break. Do you have any idea who that might be? Gunnar Henderson. Yeah, Alex, you suck. You're okay. I just I yeah, didn't yeah. look it up. I promise. Oh, really? You I, just I, knew that. That yeah. was just yeah. me using my intuition of who yeah. you would have said because right. who yeah, had a lot that's of crazy, right? I no. mean, so that's one of those things where he he did he did well. He struck out yeah. less uh, 
he struck out, uh, yeah, way less than Gunnar Henderson. Um, and it's just one of the things that I, I like his veteran ish leadership on yeah. our team. And, uh, yeah. So like I said, I, that's the only fear I have is that he did, he did too good. <laughs> like he's, he's, a, he's a replaceable piece and, you know, say the Orioles uh, make a free agent acquisition of like a uh, Tiasco Hernandez or somebody like that. I think, uh, Glenn Kalzer is your center fielder. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And left field will be somebody and curse Jed. It'd be a mix yeah. or, or actually, actually Tiasco would probably be on left and then right field would be, you know, a mix, Oof. you know? Yeah. So, that'd be, yeah. That'd so be scary, anyway, though. that, that's just a thought, right? Yeah. Well, I think, I think the hardest part is that, uh, when you're building an outfield for the Orioles, they keep in mind that left field is basically second center field. Yep. And like, I, if I had to assume they're going to do whatever it takes to keep Heston Kerstad out of left field long term. Right. But mm-hmm. I, I and agree. then my other things also kind of looking more into the future. Uh, it's just kind of based off of a couple at bats that were really, really rough in this postseason. What is the future for first base for the Orioles? Because Ryan O'Hearn, he did good in the postseason. He had probably, I would say, a top three postseason for the Orioles position right. players. Right. Um, and I think he had a couple walks, really. That was it. Um, but Mount Castle looked terrible. Right. He won at the same pitch to strike out. I felt like every at bat. Um, it was just non competitive at bats after non competitive at bat. It was awful. Um, what's the future for first base? Do we have O'Hearn? Uh, is an option. Um, we, I think it's mutual option. I'm not 100% sure. Um, do we, do we keep it's him a around? Cl- it's a club option. club option. Okay. So that's purely on the club. Do we yeah. keep, do we choose to keep him around? I think we should. Yeah. I, I personally think we should because he's been showed that he's good enough. Uh, Mal Castle, what's his long term plan? Do we is he a trade candidate this year? Because uh, we have Kobe Mayo coming up. There's another young hitter that does, that his position's taken up right now. Does Samuel Basayo get transitioned at first? Does Adley Rutschman get transitioned to first base? These are all things we got to think about because Rutschman's defensive capabilities are are declining. He does better hitting, which in, in a poor offensive season he did better hitting while DHing and not catching. Right. Um, what does the future hold for, I think, first base, the Orioles take first base defensively as a position where they can just stick somebody. Right. Uh, you have Ramon Arias. He had a great season this year, right? Right. Well, compared to what we thought of Ramon Arias. Absolutely. Well, you have Jordan Westberg. You have uh, Jackson Holiday. If Jackson Holiday is our long-term second baseman, Westberg play, is playing third base. Who does that leave for first base? Is, is Arias playing some first base next year? Is he going to split time at first base? With Mount Castle and Mayo next year, right? Who knows? I think it's a lot of question marks. Um, and Mount Castle's postseason at bats really scared me. Yeah, really scared me. Yeah, no, I feel you. I I don't know. I think uh, you know, the way Elias talked, it, it it makes me feel like they want Mayo over there. Yeah. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see. I need Mayo to be able to hit the ball. Like obviously, that would probably help. Yeah, that would that would that would make this whole conversation much better. You know what's yeah. crazy is I know you said it uh, at the beginning of the season is uh, everybody, like including myself, thought this was that year of Holiday, you know, or our young studs, and I, yeah. and, and and Holiday was nothing, Mayo nothing. Like, and, who was who was the best rookie on the team, Cody? And, and I who did I who did I, I say never, was going to be the best rookie on the team? I would have you know never said. I never. You know, said, oh, shut up! You know who did say though? <laughs> you can go back. I will find this clip and I'll put it out on Instagram or something. I'll find the notes. I made my prediction that the best rookie for the Orioles this year was going to be Colton Cowser and Jackson Holiday. I, I did predict that he was going to be good. I just predicted Cowser was going to be better. He didn't really be that good. He did. He had a terrible start. Came back and did okay, but still pretty terrible. And who was there the whole season? Who was one of the best defensive left fielders in all of baseball this season? Who should win rookie of the year? You know, I'm not giving you any more credit. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! So, uh, what do we need uh, for the 2025 postseason? I think uh, the Yankee I, salary cap. N- yeah, I still think we need starting pitching. Yeah. Um, oh no, we, I definitely think because, so. And, and I say that only because we, you know, Burns. Burns is gone. So Burns is gone. Uh, I'm, Means is a free agent after this year. Uh, yep. We still have Kyle Bradish is hurt. Tyler Wells is hurt. We still have all these injuries. Uh, is Suarez going to be what he was this year, next year? Right. 
a uh, yep. lot, so, lot of question marks. What, what's Chase McDermott's future? What's right. Kate Povich's future? Yeah. We have F1. That's the one constant. Yeah, Eflin and Kramer are, are who we know will be there next year no matter what. And yes. I, if, if you had to ask me to put money on it, Eflin, Kramer, Povich would be in our opening day rotation. Yeah, absolutely. I can, I, um, barring injury, I have to guarantee those three. Right. Um, it, addition to that, who knows? Yeah, that this. So that's um, that's a must. Uh, to yeah. you know, to 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 get through the next season's playoffs. Uh, and then the other thing that I've learned that I that uh, we need for the twenty twenty five season is veteran leadership, but not just veteran leadership. Veteran leadership that has impact potential in our lineup. Absolutely. So I don't want a um, uh, some guy that's going to be off the bench that's been playing for ten years. Yeah. Like I'm talking like not I don't need I don't need anything crazy you know what I mean but somebody that you, is you don't want the make a Robinson Torino's Rugnit door signing no no so like yeah. looking like you know looking at the next year's free agents I'm not saying um, I'm not saying Yoli Guriel yeah you know what I mean but Yoli Guriel what what do you win two World Series with the Astros I think one Something maybe like one but that's not what I'm I, that's not how I want like. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm saying more of somebody that's it's going to be in our our lineups every day, or almost every day. Well, uh, that's going to be able to you know kind of push the envelope and then teach people how like an approach to take in the playoffs and then show the young people the approach. Yeah. Well, that's like a, I know I was throwing some names at you earlier. Here's some some names that I think could be interesting. Uh, oh, this one I just found, Kike Hernandez. Oh, uh, Kike Hernandez. Yeah. Um, yeah. Danny Jansen. The, that's a catcher option that for yeah. some reason we needed. Uh, Tyler O'Neill of the Red Sox. He'd be an interesting Abs- look. Good. Absolutely. Um, and then the two that I'm most interested by, these two names, these are two that I find very realistic and I would love to be on the Orioles. That would fill some problems we've been talking about. Christian Walker yeah. or J.D. Martinez. Yeah. I love the J.D. Martinez one because that's, uh, that's a guy that – you know, is just he's been there, done that, and one of the best hitters, one of the best hitting, you know, player hitting coaches that is in the major leagues right now. But yeah, I mean, we'll get more into obviously our free agent predictions, but that's that's just what I think we really need. We really yeah, need absolutely a veteran leadership that can make an impact, yeah. right? Um, but we're we're gonna not be Debbie Downers the whole year, so. Uh, no, we'll, com- we'll be more happy next time. Yeah, coming into uh, our off season, our Utah Street Banter off season, uh, we're going to start going to our off season schedule, which is every other week. So make sure you stay with us uh, to kind of be able to tell when we're putting out. Just uh, make sure you follow us on our social medias. Remember, we're on Facebook, Twitter, or X. Sorry, Facebook X, Instagram. Um, obviously we're on YouTube, but, uh, we post, um, you know, information on our social media pages. So definitely, you know, give us a follow, keep up with us. And, uh, I promise we're not going to make you relive the playoffs, um, you know, in the next podcast. Yeah. Uh, we, have we just had to do our, yeah, oh, we had sorry. to do our due diligence on this yeah. podcast. And yeah, I, I would have to first imagine that this is probably the last we'll talk about the playoffs. Uh, yeah. We have some very interesting topics that we're going to be talking about coming up here, so it's going to be really cool. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty excited. I mean, I I, I know I've said it before, but one of the, the ones I'm excited for is uh, your uh, stadium reviews because you've been to yeah. almost every stadium, and then we're gonna we'll try to get uh, your dad on here because yeah, uh, he is a foodie that oh eats, yeah like. A ton, and he, so, he may have eaten almost every item at Camden Yards. At some yeah, point yes, he's he's at least been to every vendor. Yes, hundred uh, so, percent. So we're definitely going to try to get that on, uh, and uh, we just got some fun things to talk yeah. about. Uh, it's not all going to be extremely, extremely Orioles. So we'll we'll try to broaden our horizon, and then after the new year, we'll kind of zone back in. Yeah. Uh, but so make sure you give us a listen, give us a watch. Uh, throughout this off season because um, the only reason we do it is for people to interact and watch and, yeah. and uh, give us a, a, a listen. So without you, there's really no reason to do it. Um, but other than that, we can't thank you enough for joining us on another episode here on the Utah Street Banter podcast. And uh, we hope to see you in a couple weeks. All right, yeah. guys. See you guys. Thank you. Yeah.